Hello all you suicide warriors, Dan Pelly here, inspirational speaker, suicide warrior. I'm a two-time attempted suicide survivor in 1996 and 2010, and I don't plan on going back for a third. It took me years to get through shame and guilt and the loss of hope in my life to go public in 2016 in the hope that I could help others. And I have been. We can't help everybody but I'm inspiring others to choose life from my experiences. In 1996, devastating losses, you know, divorces like death, they say, and business and home and everything and moving, became depressed for the first time in my life. Never thought I would even be depressed to think about suicide. You know, get down and everything, but not depression. But depression took a hold of me like a wretched animal. Because suicide is an unbiased robber of life. And when you start going down that rabbit hole of depression, it can turn into clinical depression, which it did for me, and then into suicide ideation, and hope starts dwindling. And my hope just kept leaving me. I just became hopeless that I'm you know, worthy and I'm not worthy. And, and, and my worth and all that, thinking it was all based on all of that I had and everything. And as nine months went by of suicide ideation, the hope got to a point where I didn't want to live anymore. And the, the little, and I think deep down, I didn't want to die. And I don't like to talk about the details, but I went to a motel room and I was hanging on to that just a little minuscule of hope that I had left. You know, we all experience it in our faith. You know, that hope is big. It's big in the world. And, you know, I got into that room and it just, the hope just completely left me. And I became hopeless. And that's when it becomes dark and dangerous and destructive. And I couldn't even believe I was there, but... When we become that hopelessness and our thoughts are that irrational because our thoughts like that don't have to become our actions. You know, we have to fight it, fight back. And I'm lucky to be here. I'm lucky to be here from what happened in 1996 to me. I see unit for 10 days, you know, on the border of dying, you know, on, on edge every day. And I could have went at any time, you know, and, um, it was a horrific situation for myself, my family, and being that sickly and having like an 800 pound gorilla on your back. But hope, you know, I realized then in 2010, 14 years later, when my stepdaughter almost got killed in a car accident as a passenger, you know, after getting her back on her feet for three, three, four years after it happened in 2007, I lost hope again that I wasn't doing my program, I wasn't doing suicide. I wanted to, and I got her back on her feet with her mom. She was a great mom captain for her daughter. I've never seen a mother suffer, but I've never seen a mother step up like this mother did and bring her back. And she's doing well. She suffers with a TBI, and she, she inspires me because she gives me hope when I watch her smiling and being happy and, and all of it. And, but I lost hope again when everybody went out of the house and I lost hope. You know, mine was more, not a more drastic or dramatic suicide attempt, you know, that sensational, dramatic, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it was very quiet and dark and, and, and jesting and, and things like that. I, I, I don't like to get into too many details. I don't want to trigger anybody. But I lost hope again. I became hopeless again. I couldn't even believe I was there. And I was suffering again and depressed again. I got clinical and hallucinations and everything. And I didn't get on medical treatment back in 1996 quick enough. But I knew in 2010 I needed to. And when my wife walked in at the time, I knew to ask for help. I said, I need help. Men especially, we got to ask for help. Because when we become hopeless... You know, we, in the news, you know, you see these, these, these dramatic suicides. Thousands of people die alone and die in darkness. And they're never even talked about. Yeah, we see the suicide numbers, ninth leading cause, 
10 fleas in cars that moves up and down over 50,000 people are killing themselves a year in this country and becoming hopeless. And that's the topic. It's about hope. We got to really concentrate on this because when we when we grab onto hope, which I didn't think I wanted to die either time deep down and the little minuscule hope that I was holding on to, but to rebuild that hope and to be able to become hopeful again and feel worthy again. So when I think of all the top five words or the top life energy, you know, courage, determination, um, all these things, gratitude, you know, life's energy, right? But hope is number one. Hope is number one. Because when you have hope, you get to the victory. So I started grabbing onto hope after that attempt in 2010. Never again. I'm lucky to be here. And I said to myself, hoping for a better day. But you can't have inaction. You have to take action. And that was my battle. So in our faith, whatever faith you practice, hope is huge. Because without it, I think this world would crumble. All the tragedies that we see and all the disasters, but the hope takes over and the you know, evil occurs, but good always follows and it keeps the world turning. And I want you to stay hopeful that you're going to see a better day, but you've got to get up and take action. Nobody is going to do this for you. Nobody's going to get you out of bed. No one's going to tell you to wash. No one's going to tell you to eat. No one's going to force you to do these things. They might beg, borrow, and steal to get you out of bed. And if it wasn't for my wife at the time, I, I, I might have stayed in bed for two years, never mind eight months. And in, in 2010, it was just so bad. I was letting my family down, especially as a man. You know, you think you're failing and, you, and, and you're letting people down. You know, even in sickness. You know, whether it's depression or in sickness, you know, we, you know, sickness is part of this world, right? But it doesn't mean we have to be defeated over it. We see many people overcoming tragedies and sickness and, and, and finding a new mission, right? And I had to find my mission and you got to find your mission. Because without that hope, we give up. Like I did. I'll never let go of hope again, ever. I will never let go of hope. And this is why it's the number one life energy for me. Because hope equals victory every time. Yeah, we have our days we feel hopeless. We feel the world's crumbling. Uh, our you know, leadership is, is not doing what they need to do for the people of many countries, not just our own. But we have so many things going on that we can get lost in it all. And we can start becoming hopeless and isolated and, and you know, and, and just suffer. You know, we we're born into this world to be happy. We're not born to be in this world to suffer. Yes, we suffer what we need to suffer. And we enjoy what we need to enjoy. But for hope in the Christian belief or Catholics, it's a graphic, you know, I was a practicing Catholic for 50 years. I'm a practicing Buddhist now. But hope is huge in my practice. Determination, courage, gratitude, all of it. And having good intent in your heart when you help another person because you do it from your heart. Whether they help you back or not, it doesn't matter. You know, you express how you feel in life to people and then you move on because you can't force people to help you. And they're not going to help you, especially when you become suicidal or depressed. People just, they turn their head. They don't want, no one wants to deal with it. Yeah, there's a lot of awareness now, but the suicide rate has gone up, especially during this pandemic. Over 20,000 people killed themselves in June of 20 alone. It was horrendous with the ridiculous lockdowns and isolating people. It's hard enough in life that you're isolated sometimes. But you got to get out there. You got to get out there and smell the fresh air. You got to get out there and walk, whether it's cold or not. You got you to show some hope to other people and hope to yourself. 
You know, when I'm seeing someone at a counter, and I, I can tell their suffering, you know, in our Buddhist practice, you know, we look for people, we want to feel their suffering. And I try to smile and say, hey, how's it going today? Give them some hope, even a smile. Or I see a homeless person the other day, I try to give a few bucks to every time. I, you know, I'm not going to judge whether they're trying to, whatever they're doing with their life. They're out on the street, the cold and the snow. I ask them their name. I get their name, I chant for them, and I chant for them to have a better life, and I try to give them hope through energy. So as I'm dealing with all this and, and, and this type of hope that we have to grab onto, and I say to myself, what's my next topic? You know, what's, what am I going to be able to deliver to people? You know, I don't make a video every week. You know, but I said when I make my videos, and I've been going through a lot of, you know, personal changes in my life and taking care of my business, but I'm back for the new year, you know, and we talk about hope during the holidays, it's very big. And, you know, people think suicide is, is very prominent in the, in the holiday season, although it is very difficult for a lot of people statistically more people kill themselves right before spring and a lot of people don't know this because they see the blossoming of things and people being happy and people you know going about their business and happy and smiling because it's spring and all of a sudden they feel like you know it's not for me and i'm hopeless now so that statistic is very strong in the spring, and I'm, I'm making this video now because I know people are going to have this feeling when they hit the spring. Although it happens all year round, and, and the holidays are tough, but the spring and the awakening, and I felt that too. I felt around the springtime I had nothing to live for, you know, while everybody else was enjoying life. And we have to concentrate on keeping hope in our heart. We have to say, okay, I'm suffering, I'm in a bad way, I'm depressed, I'm going to go to a recovery program, I'm going to have hope that I can get better, and I'm going to take this action and, 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 and bestow it onto other people. You know, hope's very powerful. It's just, it's, you know, in every religion, right? And as a practicing Buddhist now 13 years, hope equals victory in our practice. We don't give up on it. And it's helped me immensely since I've been practicing never to give up on hope because it's such an important feeling that you know tomorrow could be a better day. I have hope that tomorrow I'm not going to want to try to hurt myself. Um, tomorrow I know that it could feel better tomorrow. I could feel better the next day. So we have our ups and downs when we're depressed and we're struggling for months and we're, and we're losing hope and we're gaining hope. But when I realized after my second attempt and I started going public, I said, you know, I got to give people hope that this is, you don't have to check out. What, over money? Over drugs? Over, uh, you know, anything? You know, alcoholism? You know, whatever you're suffering with, any illness, any illness, I see a lot of people that have lost their extremity, you know, arms and legs, and they're still, and they're still, you know, preaching God, you know, when I, I see that gentleman, and, 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 and it inspires me, I'm like, it gives you hope that even if something tragic happened to you, that you would work your way out, and it's a, it, it's a very personal decision for people, I'm not going to judge everybody, anybody for it, you know, because I believe suicide is a, it's a suffering act, it's a, it's a suffering act, and anybody that has killed themselves, I know they were suffering to a point where they couldn't move out of it in their circumstance or how they thought about it. And it's just it's just a place that they're going to be at that you, you can't do anything, and, and, and you give up. And just this is what happens to people when they kill themselves. I've been there twice. I know that edge. Never want to come to that moment. Never want to come to that dark moment because that moment is not a place you want to be, believe me. And, and, and I said, the only way I want to get back into life is to show myself and others that I'm healthy again. And, and I was lucky to get off medication in 2012. I've been med free since. And my Buddhist practice has helped me a lot, uh, you know, taking action 
keeping hope alive in my life and things are going well and I'm happy again. And you can be happy again. Don't give up on it. You know, you can be happy. And, and, and I'll tell you one thing that happened as I was feeling hope, hopeful again. All of a sudden, when I was feeling that hopefulness and my faith and practicing and chanting, I got this euphoria of feeling of, of feeling good again. Not feeling the pain of the 800-pound gorilla on my back and the depression pressing me to the point where, hey, you might as well just go kill yourself attitude. And so many people die alone and they die in darkness and you never hear their story. Those are the people I'm trying to connect to in these videos, if you're listening to me, keep hope that there will be a better day and you'll find a way You'll look for things, you'll find a way. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> so you never have perfection, right? You can't have perfection. There's a lot of downfall for a lot of people, right? So, you know, I have an automatic clicker so I can turn on and off. And, and, and I, you know, I look at things now that when you're younger, you want everything to be just right. You wanted everything to be right in order. And then letting go. I was talking to a friend the other day about it. About letting go. It's huge. Letting go of, uh, you know, of, of not forgiving people. You know, you can forgive people, but you don't have to forget what they've done to you or others. You know? And you can hold people accountable to the, your very last breath if you want. But you got to forgive them in your heart. Because you'll never move on if you don't. But that doesn't mean you don't, hold, you don't hold people accountable. And you try to show them, you know, I hope that you'll change. And I hope that you'll be a better person. And I hope that you won't be selfish. And I hope that you'll be giving. And I hope you'll love people and you'll care for people. You know, these are the messages we need to pass on to people. We need to really look at this and say, you know, let go keep hope and keep taking action for yourself because without the action you're going to get to a point where you're going to stay stagnant and you're going to stay isolated so my message to you today on this video coming into the spring i hope your holidays were good and your new year for a buddhist every day is new year's day the new year's resolution for us that we wake up in the morning with hope and determination and courage and gratitude that I'm going to have a winning day today. And I wish people all the time have a winning day when I'm on the phone with them. Have a winning week. Have a winning life. You can win and you got to win here. You don't win out here. I don't care how much material things you have or what you're about or relationships or what you're doing in life. You got to win the battle. The inner battle, because the battle remains the same in here all the time. And once you win that battle inside and you conquer hope and you know this can, this can be a better day for me, your life opens up. And you start doing things you never thought you could do. I'm doing things. I'm in the middle of writing my own book for the first time in my life writing. And I'm collaborating on an initial book about feeling worthy with a, um, a very special person in my life. And, you know, we've interviewed and I'm going to collaborate with eight other authors. And I gave my 2,500 words about how I felt about not feeling worthy and feeling worthy again. So, and then I'm into writing my own book about suicide being an unbiased robber of life and how it affected my life. And hopefully from my experiences, there it is, hopefully, and hope that people won't go down the road that I went down. And you'll still be here for yourself first and then for others. So never lose hope. It's such a precious word. It's such a precious feeling. And I'm going to leave you with my Buddhist prayer that I do on every video for you, for your family, your loved ones in life, your friends, especially for you. 
Nam Yoningi Kyo for your good health, your protection, your wisdom, your compassion, your courage, your determination, your mission, your happiness, your good fortune, and hope. Total victory. I'm Dan Pell, the inspirational speaker, and I'll see you on the next video.